Hello again, everybody. This is John over here at Reddit Aliens, and just wanted to give you an update as what's going on with the channel. So we obviously got Reddit Aliens back, and we're very excited, and we hope you are as well. We did, in the meantime, start Aliens Rebooted. If you haven't subscribed there, you can follow the link below and do that as well. What we're going to do is this. We're going to continue to post daily content like we did on Reddit Aliens on Aliens Rebooted every single day normal 15 to 25 minute videos like we always have. With Reddit Aliens moving forward, we will be posting one hour videos twice a week. We know you love the one hour format. We love to bring it to you. And that's what we're going to do here. So stay here and subscribe and also join us over at Aliens Rebooted for daily content. All right. And again, thank you so much for being here. Thanks guys. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens for real this time. It took long enough. I am John, as always. Thank you so much for being here. We've got a new format of one hour videos for you, and we're going to start it with this one today. People of Reddit, what's the scariest thing that's happened to you while on a camping trip? Please remember to like, share, enjoy, and subscribe. A friend and I made the mistake of driving to the nearest town to watch the Blair Witch Project, only to return to our campsite scared out of our minds. 18-year-old tough guy slept in the truck with all the windows covered. My friend snuck out at night and built that damn stick from the movie and put them on the windshield and then scared himself because he heard a noise. He woke me up with his scream. We drove 100 miles home, freaked out, and left all our camping gear there. So I was camping with my church youth group one year, and we were camping on one of the group's leader's property that was right at the edge of a forest. Anyway, a group of us decided to mess with one of the older kids, he was 17 then, by jump scaring him with one of those serial killer hockey masks. It was very juvenile, I know. So one of us goes to see if it's in his tent. They walk up and yell, hey, are you in there? And we hear a response of, go away, in his voice. So the kid with the mask went up to his tent and tried to shake it, then pop out wearing the mask, but that's when we realize he isn't there. We're confused, so we head back to the main group up at the fire, where we find the kid who said he'd been at the fire for the past two hours. Mind you, there was no way for him to have gotten from his tent to the fire before us. The scariest part was that night I heard footsteps walking around my tent all night along with the howls of a group of coyotes out in the woods. I still joke that we were visited by skinwalkers. Solo camping in North Idaho, miles from the nearest trailhead or road, I was sleeping in my tent through a huge thunderstorm. At one point I heard a loud crash, but it was raining too hard to go out and investigate. In the morning I found that a very large tree, maybe two feet in diameter, had come down not three feet from my tent. If that tree had fallen just a bit to one side, it would have come down on top of me, and there was no way I could reach medical help. I would have died on that mountain. I have two. First was a camping trip in northern Michigan. At some point during the night, I had to pee. I unzipped the tent and stuck my head out to find a good-sized black bear ambling by about 50 feet away. The second was on a backpacking trip in New Mexico came around a small bend on a wooden trail to see a full-grown mountain lion cross in front of me and disappear into the brush. That one was extra scary because of how silently it moved. A little scary. I was evacuated out of a flash flood with a friend as a teenager. We were camping in a state park and were awoken in the middle of the night by a sheriff knocking on our car window. It was raining too hard to sleep in our tent. He guided us along a line of other people out of the park on a footpath because the park roads were already flooded and impassable. The most frightened I've ever been in my life. My partner wakes me up in the dead of night inside our tent whispering, Don't move. Don't make a noise. I listen for a minute and hear loud rustling outside our tent. We lay there for a while frozen and the rustling continues. I start to shake from pure adrenaline. Finally, my partner grabs the axe and tells me to run for the car. I consider arguing, but bad time to argue. So finally we lunge for the door, 
I frantically unzip it and I make for the car like an Olympic runner. But then, there's nothing outside. We can't find anything. Not a sign of a sound of an intruder. We're ranging cautiously around our site, looking for anything suspicious. Suddenly, I hear the rustling again. I point my flashlight toward it and it's a literal mouse. A literal mouse had been stomping around our tent for about half an hour, scaring us shitless. You know, animals and people are frightening and potentially lethal, but nothing is as just absolutely brutal as Mother Nature. It was only scary after the fact, since I didn't know what was going on at the time. Took some city slicker friend car camping in the Sonoan Desert. My SO and I had grown up camping and thought to talk to them through all of the things they would need and the dangers they might encounter. Snakes and the chilly night temps were our biggest concerns. Come to find out that our guest had bigger concerns. They were convinced that they were in mortal peril from mountain lions, unlikely that deep into the desert or that coyotes would wander through the campground and rob them. So they brought a gun. And then every sound that night they assumed their life was about to brutally end. They would get their gun and watch for the inevitable danger to disappear. That danger was the rest of their campmates monitoring the fire, watching the meteor shower, or getting up to use a bush. Come the morning, they regaled us of their successful guard duty. You know what's super dangerous? A half-asleep paranoid person wielding a loaded gun at every small shadow on a moonless night ready to take out the lurking dangers, us, in an area at least an hour away from some place that could treat a bullet wound. I was pissed. My friend was in the middle of turning an old bus into an RV, then we took it out to a popular but out of the way campsite and set up a tent. Had a fire, drank a bit, shot the shit. We finally crawled into the tent to sleep and only then realized how much the wind picked up. It was early September, not too cold to sleep in a tent usually, but the roaring sound of the wind in the trees coupled with the wind chill was making it really hard to sleep. So after an hour or so, I suggested we sleep in the bus or RV. It was fairly comfortable despite only being a plywood floor. The noise of the wind was somewhat less and the chill was much less. The scary part was next morning when I woke up to see a cabal of coyotes around the remains of our campfire. The tent had collapsed overnight from the wind or the coyotes, and one was laying atop it. I really needed to pee but did not want to leave the bus. My mom, stepdad, and us four kids, ages 8 through 12, went camping at a local reservoir. All the kids and stepdad went into the water to swim, and within half an hour or so, Three of the four kids were close to drowning. My stepdad saved the two that were struggling to keep their heads above water and dragged them out, while I, a nine-year-old, paddled out on an inflatable raft to save my little sister, who had floated far away on hers. The rafts both leaked air and were down to less than half of what they started with. When I got to her and started to blow hers up, she started beating me because she thought I was releasing the air. What a day. 1. We were messing about in the bush about an hour from our campsite. Some woman appeared out of nowhere and started threatening us with a gun. 2. We went to a river near sundown to look for platypus and my brother and I fell and I nearly drowned. We washed up far downstream and took a few hours walking through bushland in the dark to get back. No one noticed we were gone. 3. We were playing around near the campfire and a friend of mine tripped and fell into it. All the adults made us sit and watch as they treated her burns. Then, every night for the rest of the trip, we had to help change her dressings. This is how I was taught about fire safety at age 5. 4. We had an inflatable boat and were trying to reach the other side of the lake. We lost our oars in the water and were stuck drifting for hours. No life vests, no sun protection or water. Two of our friends couldn't swim. By the time we were rescued, we were all very sunburnt and dehydrated. We got our asses beat for a missing dinner. When I was a little kid, we had a family reunion in Maine near Halloween. The dads took all the little kids up a path on the property to what we call the upper field. We saw a foxfire on some dead logs, which was pretty cool. 
We stayed there for a bit, looking at the stars. The dads decided it would be better to cut through the woods to the road leading down the hill past the driveway to get back to the cabin. As we were walking down the road, my mom and my dad's cousin jumped out of the woods dressed as a witch and a gorilla, scaring the crap out of everyone. My little sister was maybe four or five at the time, and to this day, almost 40 years later, is scared of the dark because of it. Good times, lol. Yeah, I would never thought of it. Uh, if you were not around animals for a couple of years and they weren't around you, I could see how they would be skittish or potentially more aggressive. Never thought of it. A long-haired cow standing on top of a hill about 200 meters away and looking right at me. I kept on walking, and every time I looked back, the cow was a little closer and still looking at me. Not scary in its own right. However, this was post-lockdown, and a local had told me the cows may be unpredictable and even aggressive, given they'd gone two years without seeing many people. I got back to my tent and kept on expecting to see the massive cow around the corner and come charging. Backpacking in North Carolina, right as a tropical storm hit, set up camp in the dark, and decided to wait it out. When we emerged the next day, we realized the grove we hunkered down in was almost entirely made up of widowmakers. Two events, both at our family cabin, my grandparents' house in northern Wisconsin. One, all ten of my cousins, ages four to seventeen, me the oldest, were sleeping in a large tent in the front yard. Grandpa came to get us around 10 p.m., rushing us inside. Grandma told us they changed their minds about us sleeping outside because it was supposed to storm. Found out the next morning, a family of black bears had wandered onto the property. 2. Cousin and I, 20 to 21 at the time, were visiting our grandparents during summer break in college. We decided to sleep on the screened porch since it was so nice out. Our cabin was right next to the train track, so it was loud when the train passed and rattled the house. My cousin and I woke up at the same time to something on our faces just after midnight, both screaming and then realizing one of our grandma's furniture pieces she'd been working on at the time had fallen on top of us from the vibration of a recently passed train. Thankfully, we weren't hurt, but we did sleep inside the rest of the trip. Last summer, while on a multi-day work trip to Western Maryland, I did as I usually do and set up camp rather than stay in a hotel. I was the only person in the Big Run State Park, a remote spot deep in Savage River State Forest where I've stayed most years since the late 80s. The campground has no power, so it's as dark as can be. I set up, took a long walk, had a couple beers by the fire, and ate a leisurely dinner. This is bear, bobcat, redneck, and rattlesnake country, so I'm always a little bit on my toes. This warm August night was no exception. I always hear things in the dark when I'm by myself. After 30 years of this, I pretty much ignore whatever I hear. It's always a deer or a small mammal. I was tired from driving, so not long after dark, I settled into my hammock and fell fast asleep. Being over 50, at some point in the middle of the night, I had to pee. It was much colder, and I didn't mess around. I sometimes struggle to fall back asleep after this, and I tossed and turned for a while. I drifted in and out of sleep, and was adjusting my bag when... Out of the corner of my eye, I caught a light in the campground. I figured someone set up after I went to bed, which happens. I tried to get back to sleep. Suddenly, I woke up to someone shining a flashlight into my eyes from under my tarp close to my feet. My heart started pounding a mile a minute as I contemplated what my next move was. Still half asleep, my mind raced. I thought of kicking out of the light to knock it down or kick the person. I tried to remember where my knife was. I was panicking. I decided to yell, so I took a deep breath and tried to yell, but what came out was a weird moan. I think I was too scared to really yell. I fumbled for my zipper to get out and the hammock before I got hit or stabbed or shot, and as I did, I realized that the light hadn't moved. I looked right at it for the first time, then I grabbed my glasses off my shelf and put them on. The light was the moon which had risen to just the right point to shine under my tarp and into my hammock. Oh my god. I laid back about as awake as I've ever been, breathing hard, sweating and trying to calm down. 51-year-old man, scared half to death by the moon. When I was a kid, like maybe 8, 
we went to a friend's lakefront cottage and slept in a tent in the backyard with their kids. They were like four, seven, and eight-year-olds all together, and our parents slept inside the cottage. Suddenly, my younger sister was poking me and pointing at the ceiling absolutely panicked. There was an entire family of raccoons crawling all over the tent. You could see their nails piercing through the tent as they climbed all over it. I just imagined one of them falling right through the tent and getting trapped inside and fighting these screaming little kids. I vividly remember how scary that was. We huddled until we didn't see any more feet on the tent and then booked it through the backyard back into the cottage. Me and some friends rented a cabin in the woods and were tripping balls by a campfire. It was dark and the woods had a very primordial feel. My legs at the time were intensely asleep with the pins and needles feeling when one friend joked that they were probably dinosaurs in the woods. So another friend calls out, hello, what's out there, into the woods. And out of the woods, something responded with a rough, throaty cry. I was convinced I'd be eaten because I couldn't get up. Camping with my parents next to a beach in Spain, we saw a group of strange men at night with lights on the beach. We thought they were drug traders signaling for a contraband boat, so we left our tents and slept in the car a few kilometers away. They were probably fishers or something, but well, probably even scarier in hindsight, my aunt and uncle were woken up once by military men warning them that they were sleeping right in the middle of a planned military exercise. So what do you think? Friendly argument gone wrong, drug deal gone bad, or just a random act of violence? Or something. I will say I've camped in many places, even on my own, and some places being very remote, but this one sticks with me. I was camping with a mate at a well-known waterhole in Australia. It is a kind of semi-remote area with not many houses nearby. It was winter, so the campground that would be busy in the summer was empty besides us. There are different entries to the place for the campground and for the day use parking, which are a good few kilometers apart and on different roads, but the day use parking lot and campground themselves are only a few hundred meters apart. We were kicking back by the fire, having a few beers and chatting late at night. We hear yelling like an argument coming from the day parking area. Then it sounded like the yelling was moving around the track going around the water hole on the opposite side. It continued past the water hole and started going up the valley, which is filled with huge boulders on the opposite side of the parking area. We hear a bit more yelling than gunshots, at which point we thought, let's get the F out of here. So we started to just pack up what we needed to move the car, awnings which were attached, etc., then jump in and leave the rest. By the time we were getting in the car, we heard a car on the parking lot side scream out of there. The gates to the campground were locked at night, and we knew that, so we drove without headlights to a secluded location in the campground and just sat there in silence, listening out for anyone coming toward us. We waited until morning when the ranger arrived that morning. We told him what had happened the night before, gave him a rough area to check out, and he said he'll look into it. We decided to leave that day instead of staying. We found out later there was a body found. We assume with the location it happened and the time it was something to do with drugs or something shady like that. Don't know if the guy stumbled trying to navigate the boulders or tried to hide among them and was found. Needless to say, we never camped in that area during the quieter period in winter again, but I still continue to camp, even on my own. Ooh, I got one for this. Back when I graduated high school, me and a few of my friends decided to take a celebratory camping trip to a local state park and eat some mushrooms. It was a grand time, up until we all decided to lay down for the night. One of the girls in our group had to use the bathroom, and her boyfriend escorted her. A few minutes later, we heard running in the distance and cries for help. Apparently, when she went to use the bathroom, she passed out and hit the ground hard. As a group, we all went running towards the bathrooms to try and help, but we were also tripping pretty hard, so it made for an extremely scary experience. Luckily, the campground next to us heard the commotion and came to see what happened. Turns out, the guy was a paramedic and immediately began treating her for signs of a concussion while we all stood around the bathroom. She ended up being okay with no real injuries besides a few bruises, but 
almost none of us got any sleep that night. We suspect it was dehydration that caused the incident, but she had no experience fainting spells in the past. We ended up packing up the next day and calling the trip early as many of us were too tired and slightly traumatized to continue out in the woods. We were extremely thankful our neighbor uh, and gave him some fillets we planned on cooking the next night. A bunch of kids out in the woods tripping balls were certainly not qualified to deal with a serious medical emergency. Not a camping trip per se, but my younger brother and I, along with a friend of ours, all aged 9 and 10, we are ready to spend the night in a tent set up in my backyard. Fritos, cans of soda, cookies, candy, and every comic book we could lay our hands on. We had our sleeping bags and our flashlights so we could read our comics. At one point, my brother's flashlight grazes the top of the tent, and we see hundreds of earwigs crawling above us. We let out a collective scream and booked ass into the house where we spent the night, safe in our bedroom. I was about 11 when I was on a camping trip with some of my family. We were staying at a caravan park and after I had been to the pool there, I went back to our spot and saw a man standing behind a tree just watching me. I was pretty creeped out and tried to do something else away from that tree. However, that night I really needed to use the bathroom and after some hesitation I decided to go. It wasn't a far walk, but after seeing that guy, I was nervous. Anyway, when I came back after going to the bathroom, that same man was behind that same tree watching me again. He didn't even try anything, just kept watching me, but it was super creepy. Got caught in the middle of a lake in an aluminum boat during a lightning storm. I didn't think much of it at the time, but as an adult, I look back and wonder how we made it to the shore. On the plus side, the storm drew out all the frogs and my cousin and I had a great time catching them. On the downside, we decided to keep them in our tent overnight and one of us kicked the container over so we woke up covered in frogs. It was an interesting camping trip. My grandparents were camping by a river once and after dark they saw a couple of lights moving off in the distance. It was clear that they were slowly getting closer. My grandpa realized that they were lanterns, and when they got within 50 yards or so, he shouted out something like, Who's there? The lanterns instantly shut off. He and my grandma ran to the car and drove off. When they came back the next morning, their campsite was ransacked, and anything of value had been stolen. It doesn't happen too often, but you do get reminded sometimes in reading a story like, Oh, I've been to some of the places that these people write about. I've been to Moody Falls. Cool. Huh, that's it. Flash flood came through camp and Grand Canyon in the middle of the night while everyone was asleep. Miraculously, everyone, 250 or so, survived. No one got washed away down Mooney Falls, which was approximately 200 feet tall and just a couple of hundred yards from our site. We spent all night on top of a huge boulder with water raging all around, and we could hear trees cracking and falling, smaller boulders rumbling, and people clamoring all night. Others literally clung to trees all night. Water eventually subsided just before dawn, and the place was a total mess of debris everywhere. Everything we had got swept away, including the keys to the car we'd driven to get to the canyon. Everyone had to be rescued from downriver in small helicopters, two to three at a time, to the Native American village, then in groups of eight to ten in Black Hawk helicopters from there the next day. We all thought we would die. By the time we were safely out of the canyon, we were exhausted and filthy. Twice on two different 4th of July's in Tahoe, we had bear encounters. A few years ago, we were truck camping. I woke up in the back seat with the truck swaying. I woke my guy up and he thought it was a squirrel. I had to beg him to turn on the cargo light. When he did, hello, Mr. Bear. He was in the truck bed looking for food. He hopped out once my guy started driving. This year, we were camping in an Equinox SUV. I woke up to the car shaking, and this time Mr. Bear was staring at me eye to eye at the window. Both times we had something in the truck or car we shouldn't have. The first time, it was an empty roast beef package that had fallen out of a trash bag. The second time, I forgot there was cinnamon raisin bread in the car. I will not be making that mistake again. And yes, I am very aware that it was very foolish to not be absolutely sure there wasn't anything smelly with us. 
Bears can rip doors off of cars if they smell food or even perfume. When we are tent camping, we put our food in a tree or in the food safe at the campground. These two times were off-road and didn't do that. Seriously dumb on our part. When camping on top of an old bridge on a disused logging road, on the hike in, I noticed that somebody drew a medicine wheel in the dirt in the middle of the trail. I got to a campsite and drank half a bottle of really cheap, nasty vodka. After midnight, I woke up and the deer woman, Native American spirit, was standing in the woods and she told me I had to leave at sunrise and never come back. I'm 95% sure that it was just alcohol-induced psychosis or a really weird sleep paralysis dream, but I've been a whole lot drunker than that and nothing else like that has ever happened to me. A couple of weeks later, there was a deer in my yard that scared the shit out of me. I was on a bike tour with my girlfriend through the Olympic Peninsula. We rolled in late at night to an RV park and pitched our tent. As we walked to the bathroom, we realized that we were the only women in the entire RV park. Everyone else were loggers standing around drinking. If you were unaware, one of the industries that has the highest number of sexual assaults is logging. When we went to the women's bathroom to shower, we locked the door, and I'm so glad we did. Not five minutes went by before one of the men was rattling the door trying to get in and yelling that he saw us go in, and to let him in to say hi. We slept with a knife easily accessible that night and booked it at 6 a.m. There have also been instances with coyotes and bears, but I've never been as scared as that night. I was camping at a campsite with my family in a trailer deep in the mountains at a popular spot far away from civilization. I was a hormonal teenager and did not want to hike. My family left and I stayed back to rest. After about an hour or so of napping, my mom threw open the trailer door. She started frantically looking in one of the cabinets, so I asked, what are you doing? She responded, first aid kit, grabbed it and ran out. My mom's a nurse. I later learned that a 10-year-old child at the campsite beside ours had been given a hatchet and tasked with chopping wood for the fire. He swung the hatchet down, missed the wood, and lodged it in his leg. He bled a lot. They called for anyone with medical training to help, and my mom rushed to respond. She helped to load him in a truck as best she could, trying to keep the leg elevated in an attempt to buy his parents time to drive him back to society. Never found out what happened. It definitely was serious. My mom's expression when she grabbed the first aid kit made that clear to me. Hope he's okay. I have two. When I was in the Boy Scouts on a camping trip, a black bear raided all the tents and campers on the campground not long after dinner time. It showed no fear of humans whatsoever and eventually needed to be sedated and relocated. Ripped apart a good many tents and campers, shredded them. But luckily a lot of the families were out on activities at the time. Second, I like to camp at boat in only campgrounds when I can as an adult just because I like to be away from people. The first year, we got a spot on the mainland up against a big hill with a nice stream and small white sand beach. Had a ton of fun at that spot. Though, after the fire went out, we heard a lot of unusual sounds around the camp. The next year, we went back but couldn't get the same spot. We ended up on an island in the sand cove of the lake. The second night, year two, starting around 10 p.m., the entire hillside behind the camp from year one exploded in activity. Squeals and snarls and howls of what sounded like a hundred or more coyotes, occasionally flaring up as if they caught something to eat. I've never retroactively shit my pants like I did that night. If I didn't know they were extinct in the area, I'd say they were wolves with how loud they were. Backcountry camping trip on a small island, two-hour canoe trip from shore, then two-hour drive from town. Sitting by the fire before bed, my dog starts whimpering, then pawing at his face, and eventually flailing around and alternating between rubbing his face on the ground and pawing at it. After trying for minutes to calm him down and look all over his face for signs of a bite, insects, etc., and wondering if I could even get him back to the land and to an emergency vet in pitch dark conditions, I finally realized that the dumbass had gotten a chunk of stick he was chewing lodged sideways between his upper teeth. I pried it out. He calmed down and went back to chewing sticks a few minutes later. 
You know, most of these stories have good endings and some bad endings, but either way, I separate myself. Reading his loadout for that ranging look, I was like, man, I would have loved that job. Also, wouldn't have loved to be stalked by a grizzly bear, but cool setup. Great story. Interesting. Thank you. Back when I was younger, I did some survey work for a logging company in Alaska. As I was fit and liked to hike, they sent me in first to check out the terrain and figure out the best way into the area they wanted to harvest. I always traveled light, just a backpack with a US Army mess kit, some MREs, a few spare clothes, a fire kit, a bivouac sack, an axe, a knife, some bear spray, and my late granddad's revolver. I also used to cut me a nice thick hiking stick. With all that gear packed, I set out on foot. The first night was largely very quiet, and I got a good night's sleep. Only one time I woke up to what I thought was the wind rustling through the trees, and I didn't think much of it. The next day, I arrived at a designated logging area and started to do my work. Around noon, I started to get that eerie feeling of being watched. I had had this feeling before, but I always blamed my imagination for it. Well, it grew more and more over the day. Right when I was about to set up camp for the night, I heard some rustling in the brush again and caught a glimpse of something big huddling out of sight. Needless to say, I skipped setting up camp and booked it out of there. I walked about 10 miles until I was too tired to move on. The feeling of being watched had stopped and I deemed it safe to set up my camp. I woke up in the morning and the first thing I saw were bear tracks of what I think were as a huge grizzly going all over my campsite. I've never broke up camp this fast again. I made sure my revolver was loaded and within arm's reach at all times, and kept my bear spray at the ready on the way back, but nothing happened anymore. I told the logging company about my encounter, and they said they will take the necessary precautions. A few months later, when the logging operation was in full swing, a worker was attacked and killed by what was later described as a huge male grizzly bear. A year or so later, hunters in that area shot one of the biggest grizzlies I've ever seen and judged by the size of its paws. It could have been that very bear stalking me on that hike. I used to go up to my uncle's cottage in northern Ontario almost every year. His cottage was built by him and family members and located in the middle of the wilderness off of a logging road. There's an old copper mine about a 10 minute walk away that we always use to explore as a family. Walking on the trail to the mine, we spotted some animal poop but mentioned it but didn't think about it much. Arriving at the mine, we smelled an awful odor and started kind of searching for the source. There's an old geocache at the mouth of the mine we found one year. Some of the cousins started toward it to add some trinkets when my uncle yelled at us to come here right now. While watching us go up to the mine, he noticed a bunch of fish carcasses scattered in front of it and in the general area. It all clicked for him and he realized he was about to watch his nieces and nephews walk into a bear den. We hightailed it out of there and later on at a trading post heard that there was a bear in that area and to keep our food stored safely. The next thing we knew, way we went, the smell was gone and so presumably was the bear. Not camping, but involving the woods. I grew up with the same eight-ish kids since birth, or super young. Our neighborhood connected to a massive park in our town with baseball and softball fields, soccer fields, and a football field. The park was directly behind two of the kids' houses. It is mostly woods and has so many trails covering hundreds of acres. Starting around 10 years old, we would go to the park in the middle of the night to play cops and robbers. We were all about 14 at this time and had more friends sleeping over. A few of them were all hiding and off on some of the fields while four of us just had such a horrible feeling like we shouldn't be there. So we sat in the parking lot right by the trail to our neighborhood all back to back. So we were watching each facing one direction. Our buddy Jack looks into the woods and immediately goes, do you all see that? We all look and there's so many red eyes just red eyes covering maybe 30 feet of trees, no light reflecting off them, no flash from a flashlight, nothing. We don't live in an area with a ton of raccoons, possums, coyotes, etc. We see them occasionally, but 
Not a whole group in the middle of the night. Not a single set of eyes blinked at us. The four of us scream and run to the closest house. One of us lived well, while six of our other friends immediately ran hearing our screams. Now keep in mind, we were a wild group of kids, not scared of anything. We grew up in this neighborhood and this park. We've seen the occasional animal or coyote, but all of us just had this horrible feeling of dread. Later that night, we found out a good friend in school we grew up with was diagnosed with cancer just a few hours before, and as soon as we got home, we heard about it. I don't know if it's connected, but something out there scared us all so bad we sprinted to one house and were in tears. A tree came down in a storm last summer while I was in the Adirondacks and sounded like it was landing on my tent. We were in a site with three tents, me and my husband in one, my in-laws in the second, my sister-in-law in the third, and it was quite close to a site where a family of seven was in a trailer. So we hear crack, crash, and then a chorus of voices shouting, is everyone all right? Who did it land on, etc. We get our little window unzipped and saw it had landed about 10 to 20 feet away from us. And, so I shouted out in my best teacher voice, It didn't hit anyone. We're all okay. Folks called back from the other site to say they were glad to hear it. And then I stayed awake the rest of the night, worried that the next one would really get us. I was in my teens, and it was a hunting trip on a fairly remote mountain in Virginia. It was below freezing, and we were all in our sleeping bags, in our tents, when, at about 2 a.m., we were woken by a loud banshee-like scream or shriek, and then immediately followed by what sounded like bones crunching or breaking maybe 30 feet from our camp. I could feel the hair stand up in the back of my neck and pretty much froze trying to listen for any movement. My dad quietly said, Grab my gun, which was outside the tent, as was mine, and I said, Screw that, I'm not going out there. To which he replied, You're right, this one ten thousandth inch of nylon will probably protect us. We weren't bothered further and could never find any trace the next day, but needless to say, the guns always stay inside the tent after that. I'd say what you guys did was foolish, but you already know that. Glad you made it out all right, and hopefully it's a... We almost died from hypothermia. It's a long story, with me and three of my friends, but our car broke down on the way to camping trip on the way to Yosemite. We checked the weather prior, and it said no rain, and us being idiots didn't bring a tent. Anyway, our car broke down outside of Independence, California. It would take several days to fix, and right outside of Independence is a hiking trail up the Sierra Mountains. We decided to hitchhike up to the trail, and once we got there, hiked our way up to the top where we'd set up camp on top of a huge rock next to a small lake with no tent. The first night was fine. We got high as hell off some grass one of my friends had stolen. It was great. The next day, we climbed around, explored, and got high, whatever. That night, we fell asleep on the rock without a tent. Sometime around 1 a.m., I'm awoken by the rain and my friends yelling at each other. It's absolutely pouring, and the rock we'd slept on had an indent that created a massive puddle. We were freezing, to the bone freezing, all of us shivering, and one of us was showing signs of hypothermia bad. We didn't have much, so we huddled together as tight as possible naked, waiting for the rain to pass under a tree, tying to keep one of my friends from getting hypothermia. Eventually, we all warmed up, and some, but F that was terrifying. We were camping as a big group at a provincial park. They had a shared fire pit between the sites, but we had all the sites around the shared pit. We were drinking and then noticed there was a new scruffy guy just outside the circle of chairs. He was looking for food and a drink. Being friendly, we shared with him. And he walked off. He's sleeping on the picnic table in the morning and getting very insistent that we take him to the next town so he can go to his bank. He didn't know what branch and just kept insisting we were jerks and F us because we wouldn't take him to the bank. We all stuck together and left as a group as we got really bad vibes off of him, getting angrier and lack of information. When I was a kid, my dad took us camping fairly often. 
Once, we went to some site on a big lake in Oklahoma. We were standing near the lake watching the boats. One lady on a skidoo got hit by a boat going pretty fast. When they brought her to the pier to get to an ambulance, her leg had been basically ripped off. She was not conscious. That scene was completely seared into my memory. This was probably in the late 80s or so. I still think of her sometimes and wonder if she made it. I used to go camping with my family a few times a year in Kent, Connecticut. My father loved to fish. One day, we walked back from an old fishing spot that wasn't well known and off the main trail by miles. Right in the middle of the walking trail with a severed young deer head. Like, surgically severed. Way too clean to be an animal. Way too young to be a hunter. Full head, no blood. And was not in the trail when we walked through two hours before. I do not have a logical explanation, but... It reminded me of alien cow mutilation stories. This was probably 20 years ago, and I almost feel like it was a dream that crossed over to a memory. But my dad remembers. I used to volunteer as a counselor at a teen church camp every summer for a week. Every year, we'd do a midnight hike so we could look at the stars and give teens a chance to make out in the dark. I don't know. Looking back, I don't know why this was a good idea. Once, when we were on our way back, two counselors and three or four girls got separated from the group. We didn't notice until we got back that they were gone, so it was super creepy. Also, we were clearly terrible at our jobs. At first, we thought they'd come out of the woods a few minutes behind us, but they didn't. We sent the kids to their cabins, and the staff hung around the staff cabin. Of course, someone mentioned there were cougars in the area. Now the idea that a cougar would take out five or six full-sized humans seems absurd, but at the time, we were freaked out. Finally, after about an hour, they emerged on the other side of the camp. They had gotten on the wrong trail, in the dark, and came back to a camp via the longest possible route. They were talking about how they thought they'd been followed by a cougar. It was a topic that came up every summer. Anyway... Not exactly a dramatic story, but sitting there thinking about how to handle the implications of miners lost in a cougar-infested woods was really stressful. I wasn't camping, but I was hanging out with my stepdad's family, who is surprisingly wealthy. They had a cabin in Flagstaff nearby some woods. I was uncomfortable hanging around, so I went out in the woods to collect myself. Well, I'm going to be real honest. I've always been a city slicker, and I did not realize how dark it would get once the sun sets and I ended up in the darkest of dark within the forest and I heard scurrying around me as I tried to backtrack up to the nearest street. I had no sight of light, and I got real scared when I tried to backtrack and I swear to God, I heard things following me as I tried to make it back to the local street. If you don't know what Flagstaff is, it's like it's up in the mountains in Arizona, and a fully forested area that is above the f desert. I was not yet prepared for how dark it became in that forest. I feel like I'm kind of lucky for being back safely, because like I said, I heard things following me through the leaves behind me in the forest. Of course, when I got back, no one believed me when I said I thought there was something in the woods following me. Tarp camping, three days into a five-day trip in the Sangre de Cristo wilderness in southern Colorado, leading a trip of eight high schoolers who are huddled up under two tarps just below treeline in an alpine lake bowl. Massive thunderstorm rolls through and blasts away for hours. I had to make jokes and pretend like things were fine, but I was absolutely terrified. We were so far away from help if something happened. Woke up the next morning, and as we were hiking out there, there was a 10-foot deep plus 15 foot wide gouge out across the path where a massive boulder had become dislodged and barreled down the hill. I had pictures of it, effing terrifying. That's just a terrible thing to discover at a young age. Sorry, you didn't deserve that. One night, camping on the river, me and another friend were running trot lines. Had been gone from our camp for a while upon our return, an old Ford truck was parked close to our tent down a dead-end road in the woods. Well, we could tell someone was behind the wheel, but windshield was all fogged up. Well, after getting the nerve to see who it was, I walked up to the driver's door and turned on the flashlight. 
and the guy had shot himself in the head and he was still gurgling on his blood. We called 911, but he died before they arrived. We were 15 at the time, scared the hell out of us. It took a while to not hear him gurgling on his blood. Ugh. I was backpacking with my dad and two of our friends, so two men in their 40s and me and a friend were about 15. We were camping at a lake called Kenny Lake in California, a little past a pretty small town called Downeyville. This was way up in the mountains. It was our second full day there, and we spent most of the day fishing around the lake, floating out in the special inner tubes for fishing. When we were out floating on the tubes, we noticed there was another large group of people camping on the other side of the lake, which we couldn't see from our campsite because there was a large rock peninsula blocking the view. As the sun began to set, we went back to our campsite and started to cook some fish we caught along with some backpacking food, freeze-dried chili, mac, etc. We ate all that, hung out around the campfire for a little bit, and then cleaned our dishes and hoisted our coolers up into the tree so no bears or other critters got to them. We get ready to go to bed, and we were separated in two tents, me and my dad in one, and the other boy and his dad in another. Our campsite was located on this sandy patch very close to the lake, with a weird little patch of vegetation and trees of about 30 feet dividing us from the beach of the lake. So, we weren't right on the water, but we were really close. It was also right by where the trail split off to loop around the lake, where the only entrance or exit was to the lake as we tucked into our sleeping bags, my dad fell asleep instantly, as usual, and I had a hard time falling asleep. This was weird, because I usually fall asleep pretty easily. I tossed and turned for about an hour, with my dad sound asleep on the other half of the tent, when I got this intense feeling of heavy dread. Something was going off in my brain that something terrible was about to happen. I stayed up for what felt like another two hours, but was only 30 minutes according to my watch when I couldn't take it anymore. I unzipped that tiny window on the side of the tent which opened a fabric flap that had a screen over it so the fresh air could get in, but it was still closed off. As soon as it opened, my nostrils were burning with the smell of smoke, shit. I woke up my dad immediately, and as soon as he opened the door to the tent, we could see an extremely faint orangish glow way off in the distance. He put on a headlamp to go outside of the tent, and as he turned it on, it lit up a light cone of smoke in the air and barely lit up the ground. He woke up the other people, and they agreed pretty quick we needed to get the hell out of there, or we would be crisped to ashes. We packed up our gear as quick as we could, and we were about to go, when my friend's dad suddenly remembered the large group of people on the other side of the lake. They were even closer to the raging wildfire, so we all agreed to get over there to wake them up and tell them to get out of there. As soon as we got to the point of beach on the other side where we knew they were camping earlier, we were stumped. They were gone. There wasn't a trace of them there. Even though we walked out onto the rocky peninsula that evening to look at the stars and saw their campfire from across the lake, we went the rest of the way around the lake back to our campground as fast as we could to confirm they weren't there, and there were no sign of them ever existing there. We didn't have time to look any further, so we hiked back to our truck and hightailed it out of there. As far as I know, that was the closest the fire got to Kenny Lake, and me and my dad stayed a night in a hotel in the near town a few months later, and the fire got pretty close to the lake but only burned a small area around it. I still think about where those people disappeared to because we would have seen or heard them leave since our campsite was right where the trail split to go back to the main trail. That was kind of all over the place, and I apologize for that. Just thought it would be cool to share. TL, DR, backpacking in California, having to book it at 2 a.m. because of wildfires, an entire group of campers disappeared without a trace of existence. My first time winter camping, also my first time camping in 25 years with a buddy. It was supposed to be very cold, and we thought we'd prepared. Minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit at night in the wilderness, unprepared or underprepared, our wood stove wouldn't stay lit since the wood wasn't dry. I hadn't brought a hot water bottle to keep in my sleeping bag. The temperature inside of my sleeping bag dropped to below zero. 
I was wearing tons of layers. Needless to say, it was a sleepless night. Well, hopefully this was all just a terrible coincidence and not a case of you or someone you camp with not securing your food properly. Anytime I'm asleep in my tent and suddenly awakened by an animal trying to get inside, it's terrifying. The last time, once I realized it was a fox, I was able to shoo it away and sleep easier. The time before that, it was a raccoon, and it was even easier to shoo it away. The time before that, it was a black bear. I channeled all my outdoor training and remembered to stay quiet at first, only start to yell if it's actively ripping into your tent. So I stood there motionless, holding my gun and hoping it would go away, and I wouldn't have to either yell or fire a warning shot. After a minute or so, that felt like hours, the bear wandered away, and I was able to go back to sleep. Just kidding. My adrenaline was pumping, and there was no chance of sleeping after that. I was supposed to go scuba diving. I got kidnapped by a high school friend who took me along to his friend's bachelor's weekend. We got terribly drunk, got into a fight with a nightclub owner, then had a gun pulled on me. His truck then broke down and we towed in two hours to the camping ground in the rain. The tents were flooded and everyone had passed out in flooded tents. I slept in the communion bathroom as it was the only dry place I could find. When I woke up and went back to my tent, I noticed someone took a large dump outside my tent. Everyone blamed me for the phantom turd. To make matters worse, I lost my shoes and wallet and my friends paraded me outside a fast food restaurant as a homeless person so they could get free burgers and it worked. Longest weekend of my life. A creepy man brought his hunting dogs with him and set up camp right behind the girl's cabin and all of us were 10 to 11 years old sleeping there. He was told to leave when they found him in the morning. We heard him having his dogs sniff along the cabin walls the night prior and grunting to them, but we thought it was a ghost. Same day, we found a different camp set up in the woods with a blue tent, giant metal drum, and gasoline canister. We didn't sleep well when we were there, to be perfectly honest. When I was about 10, my dad took me on a hunting trip with his friends in Northeast Oregon. We all slept in a bag, big canvas tent, about eight of us. The first night, I wake up in the middle of the night and have to shit really bad. I go outside to find a tree and hear something in the bushes and run back to the opening of the tent. I stood there for a bit, but the camp food was not stopping and I needed to shit like now. I decided the outside corner of the tent right by the entrance was a safe place. Ugh. The next morning, everyone got up and instantly smelled it. I pretended to be asleep, but it didn't take long for them to find it and figure out who it was. We were on a boardwalk trail in Yellowstone because I wanted to see one of the geysers go off. It was right around sunset, but it was so overcast it was already looking dark. On top of the rain and sleet coming down, my friends started getting nervous, but we were so close to where the geyser was supposed to be, so we kept walking until we noticed a pretty sizable hole in the board. This was right around a geyser basin, so the land outside of the boardwalk is sketch. My friend put their foot down and said we needed to go back. Then we all heard something big push through some brush, but we couldn't see it on account of the poor visibility. We waited, and then we heard it again, but closer. In our minds, we thought it may have been a grizzly bear, so we didn't just want to run and entice it to chase us. One of us was constantly looking behind, and by the time we got back, it was dark. Glad we didn't push through to the geyser after all. In all likelihood, it was probably a bison, which is also not a good thing to bump into, but hey. Girl Guide Camp When I Was Nine We were sleeping in tents when I woke up to a sniffling grunting noise beside my head, laid still as whatever it was moved around before heading it head off into the bush. Tried to wake my tent mates, but they didn't move at all, so I decided, in my nine-year-old mind, that I wasn't staying to be eaten like them opened the tent flap and closed it before bolting across the clearing to my mom's tent. The next morning a ranger came around and told us to be careful since a black bear had been seen breaking into garbages and campsites. Nothing like realizing that thing I heard was a bear sniffling my head through thin cloth. 
I was camping in the Boundary Waters canoe area between Minnesota and Canada. I was just about to go to sleep when I realized I needed to use the bathroom. So, I zip out of my tent and I start making my way to the toilet, which is nothing more than a stool out in the open in the woods near our campsite. It's important not to attract wildlife near your campsite when camping in the BWCA, so using the designated toilet and not a random tree is highly recommended. It's pitch dark and dead quiet, and as I walked by where all of our canoe paddles were leaning up against the tree, the vibration from me walking made all the paddles clatter to the ground. I about jumped out of my skin. Thankfully, everything was okay, despite waking everyone else up. A thief came to our tent at 3 in the night. I woke up, moved a bit, and I could hear very careful footsteps moving away as silent as possible, but obviously right next to me outside. I held my breath, heard nothing, opened the tent but couldn't see anything, just popped my head out, closed tent, laid back down. Was I wrong? A couple of minutes later, I hear footsteps on the gravel walking path, first slowly, then quickly going away. This person probably hid behind a bush a couple of meters away before he decided it was safe to go. We were all alone on that camping ground, and it was not open yet because it was off-season, but there was a sign allowing it and stating all facilities were closed. So creepy. I've had a lot of individual experiences, but the most terrifying one that comes to mind, to set the scene, my grandmother has this old as dirt tiny little camper grandfathered in at this campground. It's way in the back along the tree line, so there's never anyone by it. It has three beds, and one of those beds has a small crank window facing the woods from the back of the camper. Obviously, we hear raccoons and whatnot all the time, so you just kind of learn what they sound like. But I remember a time when I was laying there, trying to fall asleep, and I heard what sounded like human steps behind the camper. It was after my grandfather died, so I assume some kind of paranormal stuff, but regardless, it was terrifying to be in a camper with one other person facing the woods and hearing human footsteps walking by your window. I built a brick shithouse in my pants that night. <laughs> 